Mr. Vishik Talwar, Chief Client Officer, Insights Division, Cantor, to do the session on sustaining disruptive growth. Please, can I have a huge round of applause? Okay, so this is uh, not a story about how to find disruption. It's about a story of how do you maintain the momentum if you found a disruption. Uh, we've seen uh, many a brands that have been disrupted. For instance, face wash as a category was disrupted by Ever Youth some years back. However, today it doesn't exist as a brand. So it's many, many brands, therefore, in the course of having found the disruption, lose the momentum somewhere. And this is about that's this story is about how we, you know, kind of keep the brands on the path to the disruptive growth. Uh, during the course of the study, most of the messages you would have heard through various medium. One difference that we are getting is because we from the knowledge industry, we are giving you validated data. And for that, we are largely relying on the Brandsy data, which is the largest brand building database that we have, which has trillions of data points, which covers more than 150,000 brands across some 500 plus categories across some 50 odd countries. So, the, largely, the learnings are coming from that space. So we decided to see what makes the difference between a brand that's growing and the brand that's not growing or declining. And difference turned out to be the most import, important element of, or that was the single most criteria which could predict whether a brand is likely to grow or unlikely to grow. If we were to map the disruptors on this, and disruptors being Amazon, Ola, Uber, uh, Netflix, and brands like those, they're just in a different league altogether, explaining the whole phenomena about that the growth is being driven by difference. The era we live in is set to be disrupting all around us. There are disruptions everywhere. There are innovations that are screaming at us, yet it is extremely difficult to find a disruptive growth. Only six brands achieved it in the course of one year. Interestingly, of those six brands that, that did find a disruptive growth, three out of 10 actually came back to their own original levels in three years' time. The competitors, competition is going to fight back and push it, going to push it back. It was only one in 10 which could actually maintain that momentum. So it's not just difficult to find disruption, but it is equally difficult to maintain or sustain this disruption. Whenever we see a slack, we tend to put in more monies behind building saliency, which is nothing else but building mental or physical availability. A lot of times it is not sufficient. And the reason here, rather, the brands that were declining were actually more salient. Coming back to the local world, our own world, CPG growth in the last few years has been basically on building saliency. That means they've reached out to more number of people, they've informed about their brands more often, uh, and they've been talking to the brands more and more, either in the, either of the uh, networks, whether it's offline, online, everywhere, including retail. But in the same period, what we saw is their brand health or brand vitality as an indicator started slipping. What this did was it made them vulnerable and open to disruption. Patanjali, we all know, disrupted. We know it's not been able to sustain its momentum as well, and that's the whole point. But yes, it did make us a, a huge dent in the FMCG space. We're seeing smaller disruptions happening all around us, be it Indica with a hair shampoo, or the ID dosa mix, or even Agarbattis, which are disrupting our uh, mosquito repellent industry as well. So to look at what actually holds or sustains the disruption, we went to the guru of disruption, uh, Jeff Bezos, and said, what is he talking about here? He does talk about commercial like enterprises can also do good to the society, which is exactly what purpose is, which exactly is the role of a brand to find an area which is, or find, or define the role for their brand that fits into a consumer's life and how it makes the consumer's life better. Closer home, uh, if you look at the unicorn brands, they're all growing at more than twice the average growth, uh, very clearly embedded in purpose. 
uh, if you look at uh, two competing brands, uh, very clearly differentiated on purpose. One is talking about quality of life through delivery of convenience. The other is talking about nobody goes back with a bad meal. Extension of the same, which is, that's why they could move into the restaurants, which is out of home consumption, also into the space of uh, the, the ratings and feedbacks. Here is in the own words of one of the largest FMCG players, what they think about purpose. <laughs> It's a huge endorsement of embedding the brand in a clear purpose and a disruption if it can hold that purpose together. Just giving us a, a sneak preview of how we look at building a purpose for any system and it's a journey. It's a journey which starts with perhaps isolated tactic, which is more about finding a purpose or a role that a brand can play in a consumer's life which is meaningful, authentic, unique. Uh, it goes on to the second level where it is, becomes a societal brand purpose. Uh, it is largely led by the leader of that organization. It requires cultural change as well as strategic change in terms of building it. At a level higher, which is, it's a company-wide strategy, which essentially means that the entire company is geared towards that purpose. Every decision is seen from that point of view. And at the fourth stage, it actually becomes more than just the organization, it becomes a movement on its own and goes beyond the boundaries of that particular organization. <clears throat> Won't delve deeper into this, it will need a separate session altogether. So we looked at what else did the gods say of, for, around disruption. Well, it said that we need to be continuously looking at audiences to broaden our relevance. We could broaden the relevance through identifying new target groups. We could broaden through new occasions, through, could broaden it through the various demand moments that we have. So it's about continuously broadening our consumer relevance for our brand, for the larger set of consumers. If you look at the brands that have grown, uh, clearly meaningful is also, is the one that actually has helped it to do. I will also take you through a particular case study. Uh, this is Lululemon. Many of you would be aware of the brand. It is a highly focused brand on yoga. It was a brand that was built in Canada. Uh, <clears throat> it, is, uh, it, is, it, it, it had a disruptive growth into the yoga. It was through their designs, their fabrics that they used, which were innovative and it helped it reach a stage. But in 15 to 17, it started facing pressures or headwinds. We looked at the profile of this brand. It almost echoes like the iPhone profile, which is a very core set of people who are very attached to the brand. It's very clearly differentiated. But on the other hand, if you look at it from a closer angle, there is that differentiation edge that it has. If it can be made meaningful to many more, there is a potential that is there for it to grow. This was the campaign that was launched. It used the ethos of yoga itself, and it extended into various different spheres outside yoga, but remaining in the health space, even the meditation space, etc. I'll just show you the ad which makes it more clearer.
This campaign was backed up by a 360 degree effort. They splashed it around. It was one of the first time that they went on air through a campaign. The brand had largely been built through word of mouth and it was back to disruptive growth. They crushed the Wall Street as one of the headlines said and it was also the, one of the top riser brands in Branzi. It is also about continuously pushing the boundaries, looking at new areas of opportunities. Uh, this could happen naturally. For instance, uh, Ola went from you know, car hiring or cab hiring to outstation travel to now two wheelers. Or in case of Zomato, which had to learn the entire new, new ecosystem of home delivery of food. So it's, it's about continuously expanding ecosystems. We also looked within the brands data, the brands that grew, which had, which were operating in more than five ecosystems, grew, not only grew much, much faster, but they also grew on a much, much larger base. They were already large brands and yet they could grow much faster. We've seen the God, it's unlikely that we won't talk about Amazon. Another wonderful example of expanding, continuously expanding ecosystems. Uh, and giving seamless experiences across all the systems and experiences another thing that the guru talks about, which perhaps we'll speak in another time, another session. And closer home, Geo has done exactly the same. It started in 2017, very, very clearly differentiated on difference, built its relevance, made its audiences more wider by bringing in the fiber network and therefore becoming equally relevant for the people in the upper SECs. Uh, continuously growing at a very aggressive pace. And now it's moving almost into the third stage where it's trying to occupy all the other ecosystems that it can move into. That's all I had just to uh, finish it. Once we have a disruption, let's not fit it away that advantage. Uh, it is all about maintaining that momentum. And to maintain that momentum, there are three things that we can do. We can you know, embed our disruption in the purpose we can always be on lookout of making it more and more relevant for more and more brands and more and more occasions. And of course, we can activate it through different